the message you're about to watch was originally uploaded September of 2020. As many of you already know by now, due to the algorithm of the beast and the Antichrist system that is searching online to try to find any reason to take down the few channels that are still crying out in the wilderness against the abomination. Because our YouTube channel was under attack, with wisdom, we took the power out of the devil's hands and removed a handful of videos that they would have tried to use against us anyways. And even though it is a sacrifice to re-edit these videos and re-upload them from scratch, it has been one of the biggest blessings in disguise. Because many people that are re-watching these messages are starting to realize how prophetic they really are. And how much the Lord loves us that he has been warning us, crying out in the wilderness to prepare for what is now coming to pass. So although it is a sacrifice to take down videos that have thousands of views, re-edit them and remove certain words that the image of the beast who is alive would try to use as a reason against us, as a reason to shut down the channel. We have replaced those words with either a sound effect, leaving it blank, or another word. Using parables and coded language, we hope you're able to connect the dots. And remember, all of the messages and documentaries that expose the mark of the beast, that expose the abomination and the Antichrist agenda, can still be found on our website at revelationsofjesuschrist.com. We have dedicated a whole page to exposing the mark of the beast. We also have a Rumble channel you definitely want to subscribe to. The links will be in the description box. So we hope you enjoy this message as it has been re-uploaded. We ask you to help spread it around so people can be encouraged and blessed by the word of the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we love you all. Grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Messiah. To the elect across the earth, we love y'all so much. Welcome back to the dinner table, y'all. I know you must be hungry. This is a great meal. And of course, I'm your server. I'm going to serve you the meal. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you probably like, what did I click on? This brother talking about giving me food. And you got to understand something. Jesus said, come and taste to see that the Lord is good. He said, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you would let me in, I will enter in and have dinner with you. After all, one of the greatest things that we look forward to is what? The marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. You should start eating with the Lord now. And then we call this the dinner table. If you're new to the channel, you see Jesus Christ is the king of the kitchen. He's the one that makes these messages. He cooks them up. And as a servant of the Lord, I serve you the meal. Amen. Is that, you see where I'm going with that? So we got this thing that we like to say that Jesus Christ has many titles, right? So he's not just the Lord of Lords. He's not just the King of Kings. He's the chef. Of all chefs, can I get a name, man? He's the king of the kitchen, okay? So now that we've cleared that up, I'm going to serve you this amazing meal. I hope you got your notepad. I hope you got a pen because even though we're at a dinner, it's a classroom style setting, okay? So, of course, you better have your sword, the word of the Lord, amen? And, of course, we don't eat with some dirty, nasty, stank hands, so let's wash our hands in the Spirit. In other words, let's pray and get clean by the blood of the Lamb. So we receive this message correct and clean. Amen. So let's say it together. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me of all my sins and wash me in your holy blood. Lord, I, I ask you to help me to receive your word right now. To be a light unto our feet, to increase my faith, to correct me, convict me, encourage me, whatever your word needs to do, Lord. May it do what you sent it forth to do. 
Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to bind every power of darkness, everything of the enemy that would try to stop me from receiving this message and the blessing. I love you, Lord. May I be able to focus and have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for another word, another meal. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. This is great. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this message. We're going to get right into it. A um, couple of announcements. I'm going to tell you why, you know, God put it on my heart to release this message. The last video, uh, Can You Handle the Truth? It was kind of like a sermon documentary, you know, sermon slash documentary, right? It's a lot to handle. And it can be overwhelming for a lot of you. And you got to remember something. Even in these fearful times, you cannot be afraid. You can't let anxiety take you over. But you can't run from the truth and run from fearful truth as well. What do I mean by that? Well, look at the book of Revelation, right? The book of Revelation is a terrifying book if you really look at it. Like, So people will try to accuse you if you preach a message telling them the truth about the mark of the beast and things going on they might try to accuse a a pastor a preacher or a servant of the lord of being a fear mongerer but would they accuse god of being a fear mongerer because he wrote the book of revelation through his servant this book is terrifying it talk about people dying wormwood creatures coming out of the earth stinging men all type of stuff but there's also joy there's also hope. There's the end. It shows you what's going to happen, how Jesus will reign on the earth. So if you really look at it, you cannot be afraid of man, of the things coming on to the earth. Just fear the Lord. Remember, the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord and to leave evil as understanding. All right, so. With that being said, y'all, um, we do have more videos that we do got to put out. Um, there's going to be a part two to the truth. Uh, can you handle the truth? Or, you know, because in reality, a lot of people can't. They're not ready for it. People will fight it. They'll reject it. They will avoid and hide from it because then they feel this security. But it's a false security because this is coming upon the face of the earth right now. And you all will have to make a choice. On where you stand. Remember that. Okay. It's very interesting how. The Lord God Almighty. Gave this warning and message. For me to release. Right. In less than 72 hours. There has been a rise of slanderers. And you got to ask yourself. Isn't that kind of odd. Before I could release other videos. I wanted to release this video. Because it's a very fun message. It's going to kind of switch up your atmosphere. Although you can't run from it. You got to know it's real. The mark of the beast is coming. It's time for you to get your house in order. It's time for you to pick up your cross. Deny yourself and follow after Jesus Christ. It's time. Okay. It's time for you to get ready and stay ready. But this this message you're really going to love it. Okay. So uh, with your pen. I want you to write this down. The mystery of David's harp. What you doing here? Okay. Got my son's guitar with us today, y'all. Shout out to Simba for letting us use his guitar for the message. Y'all want to see me play, don't you? Okay, just hold on. I didn't want to show off, you know what I'm saying? But Let's go ahead and just step back real quick, just. I was just playing with y'all, man. Look, it's not easy to learn, you feel me? But that's a guitar. It's not a harp. But he needed to make an entrance into the into the message, amen. So shout out to uh high five to the cool guitar. 
prayed over. Whenever you get instruments that you want to praise the Lord with, make sure you pray over them and bless them and dedicate them to the Lord. Amen. So with that being said, the mystery of David's heart. But I want you to write under that or in parentheses, human harps. Now, I kind of violated because I'm dropping nuggets way too early. But sister, brother, you are in for a treat. This, low key, this is kind of like a dessert message. <laughs> Have you ever ate something that was technically dinner, but it was more like a dessert? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, what could I describe? Like something that, oh, back in the day, I remember, back in the day, I remember a pizza place called Uno up north. I mean, I don't know if they switched up their style. A lot of companies done got fake and genetically modified. Y'all remember back in the day, Pizza Hut? When I was a child, Pizza Hut was so good. When it was real. I'm talking about when it was real. You know what I'm saying? And the crust was like cake. You know what I'm saying? Or Uno. It's like a dinner slash dessert if you really look at it. So, this is a great message. And like I said to some of y'all, um, I got the, after this, by the grace of God, we got the part two of the can you handle the truth. Just more, more confirmation, y'all, that is coming fast. It's coming down the train tracks. Coming down the tracks fast, y'all, okay? It's... It's not time to be afraid, like I said, but you better be prepared. You better be ready. Get in your prayer closet and go get right with the Lord. Amen. Um, as far as uh, I've had, I would say about eight to ten separate people tell me, why are you not responding to your slanderers? You know what I'm saying? Why are you not saying anything? First off, do me a favor for real. Don't do not do that. You know what I'm saying? Because the reality is... I have a relationship with Christ, and I'm clearly aware <laughs> of the flood of satanic lies that have came in after I've released this uh, video exposing Satan in the mark of the beast, all right? I have to wait on the Lord. When he guides me to respond, if he does, and when he does, I will, okay? But you got to remember something. One of Satan's tricks is to get you to respond to him. You know that, right? So, remember when Jesus was fasting and Satan said, hey, turn those stones to bread. Could you imagine, even if Jesus was to be like, Satan, don't play with me. I'm God. Boom. And he turned them stones into bread. Do you know that wouldn't have been a victory for the Lord? Why? One of y'all tell me why, sister, brother. Tell me why. That wouldn't have been a victory. Even though Jesus would have proved Satan wrong. Why would that have been a trick? Because Satan just wants people to react to him. And react to his demand. You see that? So he turned no stone to bread. For Jesus, God in the flesh to be like, okay. But if I do, are you going to back away? Nah. You don't move by Satan's will. You don't just respond or do something because he's telling you or asking you to do it. First off, you got to be led. There were times when Jesus was silent with his accusers and there was times where he spoke up. You have to be led by Christ. So trust me, saints, it's if if you've never gone through that, you know, what I'm saying then you've got to humble yourself and try to see from someone else's point of view that's going through it or has been through it. Sister, I'm, brother, I'm sure you could agree. There's, there's not too much that's more frustrating and vexing than a handful of satanic slanderers that are lying about you. <laughs> and you're like, wait a minute. Like, I know my weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? I know where I need to improve. It show ain't Satanism and Luciferianism. And Jesuitism. <laughs> so what's what's terrifying about those who slander true men and women of God is that God will immediately fight for them because he's righteously going to stand up for his servants. You see what I'm saying? For example, sister, brother, one area of my life, I've said it before, that I need prayers in. Is when I'm driving on the road, right? I'm sure a lot of y'all can relate to that. It seems like people don't know how to drive. <laughs> Whether it's pulling out, 
They don't put on signals. They'll cut you off and they get mad at you. And I've told the Lord, Lord, I need help. I need patience on the road. And because see, patience is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But if somebody came out and said, Brother Wally is an impatient man and I'm here to expose him. Did you know righteously I could go into my closet all night long and be like, Lord, this guy came out with a video publicly saying I'm impatient when I drive. And God would say he might not have done it with the right motive, but you aren't patient when you drive. So how you expect me to fight for you? You know what I'm saying? I can I can deal with that man for coming at you with the wrong motive instead of. Him wanting to correct you in love. He just wanted to do an exposed video. But if somebody comes with a video that is not true about you, sister, brother, then God will deal with them. You see? So I just need to say that for y'all that have emailed and said, hey, man, why aren't you saying anything to these people? You don't respond to Satan. Satan responds to you. Oh, that you got to put that on a shirt. Come on, brother. So... Can we get into this meal? I know you hungry. I'm hungry. Brother, stop talking. It's been 15 minutes. Enough. Feed me my meal so I can get up out of here. Okay, y'all ready? The mystery of David's heart. I don't think I need a lot of time with this one. Hey, I've said that before and it ended up a three-hour message. But truly, I'm telling you, this is in and out meal. Nice little quick bite to eat. Let's get it. So, okay. So. All through the scriptures, you see harps. It goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 4. Now, if you want a three-hour message, I'll go through every verse on the harp. But I think we can both agree. Can we fist bump on that? Eh. Is it okay in the fist bump? Nowadays, you never know. I might get accused. Of, I might be some kind of Illuminati thing. You know what I'm saying? Are we cool? Can we fist bump without a video coming out about it? <laughs> so, real talk, y'all. I love you. For y'all that are clean-minded and you know the Holy Ghost is with us, I really appreciate you. My wife does. We all love you so much, and we appreciate you in the fight with us. Amen. So, Let's get it. We can agree on that. We don't have to go through every uh, scripture. However, we got to tap into the nuggets. Can I get an amen? Boom. Harp. Let's go. Turn with me. Um, should I do it now? Okay, so the word harp. Okay, I got a couple written down here. You want to write these down. The original is Kinnor, K-I-N-N-O-R. There's also another word called Nebel and also Nebel or Nebel, right? Have you ever heard the word sultry, P-S, sultry, but it's really sultry? You ever read that in the scriptures? So these are all representations of the harp, right? Different words for the harp. But the harp is a no-joke musical instrument and when you see where we're going with this you are going to be so fired up sister brother you are going to be like let's get it and especially after seeing a video and if you haven't seen can you handle the truth i believe that's the title of it please watch it and help spread that video that video is 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 going far right now um all glory to christ there's a lot of people that the light hits and the truth is revealed to them so let's be let's be very grateful for that. But help spread that video. It's all about the mark of the beast. It's all about what their agenda is and what they're planning to do. OK, and what I really appreciate about God telling me to do that video is it it snaps you into reality to stop playing games. We have seen so many of y'all comments. We try to read them. We can't respond to all of them. That's just a rule I got. I try like if it's. Something way out in left field or if somebody has a desperate question and if it's brought to my attention, that's one thing. But it just seems overwhelming to respond to everybody because we love every single one of y'all. And if we're going to respond to a, a few of you, then we got to respond to all of you. So comments have been so encouraging as far as like how so many of you are like, wow, I got to get right with the Lord. This is not a game. You know what I'm saying? Amen. That was the intent. That is the fruit. Remember, you will know a tree by its fruit. I know false prophets want to act like fruit is a bad thing. 
<laughs> this is crazy. You can't win either way with these slanderers. But fruit is the evidence of who a person is in the Lord. Yes or no? Like, when you seen that video, what did it do to you? Did it turn you dark? Did you feel like the devils were around you? Or did it make you convicted to want to get right with the Lord to get prepared to say no to the, to the mark of the beast? If it did that, I know, and I've said this before, in this last hour, I truly believe the spirit of dumb is one of the most powerful, unclean spirits right now. I know that sounds crazy, right? You can think like spirit of fear, spirit of murder, all these principalities. I'm telling you right now, the spirit of dumb be on a lot of these false prophets, these uh, religious Christians. And it's so, I don't know if some of y'all ever have ever dealt with them on like a Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Have you ever went to battle digitally? With a bunch of religious Christians that got the spirit of dumb in them. It is the worst, sister. You you can bring scripture and, and the click and you'll just get a dumb response back. Well, well, I don't care what that says. It still doesn't mean what it says it means. What are you talking about? It's the spirit of dumb. The Bible also talks about the spirit of error. You know what I'm saying? The spirit of error is so bad because in their error, error will keep them from seeing their own wrong. I'm not going to get into that. We got another message coming out called the God of Illusion. That one right there, I believe is more than likely going to be kind of like a documentary style. When this was revealed to me, no joke, y'all. Okay, I know, I know, you know how it is at the dinner table. You know what I mean? Brother Wiley be one minute in the sermon, the next minute we talking about the zoo. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Okay, I'll get back to the message. So, all through the scripture, harps, right? Can you think of somebody in particular that loved to use the harp? Come on. Come on, let me hear it. David, right? So, I do want to talk about my brother David. Now, the cool thing is, is like I said, this message don't have to be super long, but it's super strong. I'm telling you, when you see this revelation for yourself, you're going to be very encouraged. You're going to really want to step it up in your praise and worship. So let's just go ahead. Should we just start there? All right. First Samuel chapter five. Now, First Samuel chapter 5 is very interesting because this is where um, Saul, now y'all remember Saul was anointed as what? As king, right? Um, okay, so let's just go right, should I, should I do it? Alright, let's go to First Samuel chapter 10. First Samuel chapter 10. Alright, now in this chapter, as you know, Saul, right, is made king, right? And of course, we know what happened to Saul, but this is very interesting. So if we read chapter 10, let's start it. Mm, let's go to verse 4 going down. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. You see that? That bread is significant, okay? The breaking of the bread, right? It's always pointing to Christ. This is what's amazing about this. And after that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come hither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place, with a psaltery, remember I told you about that, with a tabret, a pipe, and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Okay, so this is interesting. Here we got that psaltery, you got the harp, right? It says, and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them. And thou shalt be turned into another man. This is talking about Saul. Now listen to how deep. Matter of fact. In reality. This is another message really. In fact. Let me, let me write that down. Another man. That's a great sermon title. Another man. 
So you're telling me that when the Almighty is getting ready to anoint Saul as king, they come with music, praising and worshiping and the harp, right? Because that's the name of the message, right? The mystery of David's harp under, underline human harps, right? And it says that the spirit of the Lord shall come upon Saul and he shall become a different man or another man. Does that mean he no longer was Saul? He was Jimmy from, from the corner store? No, it means he changed. I find that very fascinating because Jesus Christ makes us born again in the spirit, right? He changes us. When the Holy Spirit, remember when we get washed in the blood of the Lamb and He knows that we are sincere. See, God knows when you're sincere or not. If you just do a quick prayer, you planning on going back into the worldly lifestyle and sinning. I don't see how these people with the spirit of dumb think. That God is going to fill someone with the Holy Spirit that is living a disgusting, sinful lifestyle. Let that sink in, y'all. Where is the respect for the Holy Ghost? So, imagine that when we are washed by the blood of the Lamb, we do become another man. Ladies, another woman, right? But you get my point. We change. But yet you notice... Let's fast forward now. So I wanted you to see the harp there. But if we fast forward to chapter 16. Now this is only six chapters away. Saul is bugging. <laughs> the Bible said his, his rebellion was that of the sin of witchcraft. Right? In America there's a lot of witchcraft. A lot of rebellion. Right? David Wilkinson, Derek Prince. They spoke about it for years. But something happens. And we're going to have to read this whole chapter, y'all. So stick, sit tight. Not the whole chapter, but a good chunk of it. So sit tight. Chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Now pause. Are you telling me for you lying deceivers? Are you telling me, you deceivers out there that are telling people once saved, always saved, we don't have to do nothing, it's no... Are you telling me the same way Saul was anointed, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he became another man? Or should we say like a born-again experience, not the same thing, of course, but you get my parallel. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, right? You receive the Holy Spirit and you become another person, brother, sister, right? But yet when Saul became, began to be rebellious and move in the sin of witchcraft and do evil, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So you're telling me in the Old Testament it was that severe, but in the New Testament... If somebody receives the Holy Spirit, if they live a life of sin and rebellion, the Holy Spirit is not going to depart for them, from them just like he did with Saul. <laughs> See, saints, all you got to do is study the word to shut these clowns up. They won't fight you with this. Trust me. They'll, they'll try to show you pictures and what they think or feel and what they think or feel. But they're not going here, though. You see what I'm saying? So let's keep reading. Okay. So, I'll read it again. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil. Now, for y'all dirty-minded people in the back that creep in to spy, he's not, this ain't talking about a devil horn. For you dirty-minded people. Don't be accusing the prophet of being an Illuminati. <laughs> this is crazy, saints. I'm telling you, these people's minds are gone. This is a horn that they would fill with oil to anoint people. Okay, he wasn't throwing up devil horns for you dirty-minded people in the back of the room. Behind the bushes. Uh, let, let's go back. Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. 
for I have provided me a king among his sons. I love this. Watch this. And Samuel said, how can I go if Saul hear it? He will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Now, pause. This is interesting. And I was saying to our brothers and sisters that gather locally about this scripture. <laughs> this is amazing. Do you think God was worried about a sacrifice or was he telling the prophet to take that as a camouflage to hide his true intent? Yes and no. You want another? Let me let me sing it. Was the Lord telling the prophet to take to take a heifer to offer up an offering? Man, that was terrible, y'all. You should say something. You should be like, brother Wilder, you need to chill, bro. You need musical lessons, okay? Get the lessons, and you can come back to the dinner table with the guitar. Until then, put it down. Give it back to your son. You know what I mean? Just cut it out. Okay, fine. Okay? Shout out to Lioness, too. She loves the guitar. I bought her guitar lessons legit, like, two years ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we're so busy. Um, even the children, we bought them. Um, there's like a, um, how do you, how do I say it? It's like a package deal that you can get, and for y'all parents, please do it. It's very affordable. You can buy a space of um, music class, that, and they give you a list of people to choose from, whether you want to learn the guitar, learn the piano, learn the drum, and they can meet with you for how many hours you pay for. It's very wise, saints. Okay, try to get that in, um, you know, on a budget, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, so... Whoa, I'm burping already at the dinner table. You know what I mean? It's a good meal. But it says here that Samuel was afraid that Saul would kill him. And God was like, let me just take a heifer. You know what I mean? That way you could just say you're making an offering. But you notice God's character here. He wasn't really concerned with the offering. The heifer was more like a a a cloak or a you know how the prophet would wear that cloak that mantle it was to hide his true intentions so would we accuse God and the prophet of being deceitful see that's why you got to be very careful people online that y'all find out about and they really don't know God I'm being real with you they don't know the scripture like that they think God is one way and they'll come at somebody like me, like, can you imagine? This man told you to, if you have to get rid of your husband, cut him off. Can you imagine he said such a thing? Yeah, I said such a thing. See, these are clowns that don't run ministry and don't know what people go through. Okay, there are women that have contacted my wife and I, that utterly get beaten to the point they black out and wake up with a concussion. Yes, sister, there is a time when God says, get out of that relationship. Am I talking about a marriage where a man and woman both are seeking the Lord, but they make mistakes? See, Pharisees would accuse me of that because their heart is already wicked. You see what I'm saying? They did that to Jesus. Jesus, pure itself, love itself, no guile in the Lord himself, right? Healing a man on the Sabbath, and what did the Pharisees do? He healed on the Sabbath. Cursed be the man. How wicked. Instead of them looking and being like, wow, man, we know that guy. He's been crippled his whole life. Wow, oh, almighty. You would use this man to heal him, even if they didn't know he was the son of God. But their heart is so cold. You understand? So they'll automatically think something negative or not show you the context of my sermon. Right? Right? So going, going to this now. People think they know God. But look what he did here. He wasn't even worried about the offering. He was saying, man, just take it as a cloak. You know what I mean? Take it just so that way you have an excuse. If you get caught along the way and they, you know, they're getting ready to kill you. You'd be like, hey, I'm, I'm just taking this heifer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, now that we established that uh, you think you know God, you need to know him more. Amen. And that goes for me too. We all got to get to know the Lord more. It's like anything in life. How could you call someone a best friend if you don't really know them? 
You see what I'm saying? So, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Alright? And Samuel did that which the Lord spoke and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, You come as peacefully? Have you come peacefully? Peace? Have you come peaceably? Think about the authority and the power of a prophet back then and man of God. You know, that's why internet and all of that is so dangerous because it takes away the, the respect of God's people and it, people don't have the fear of God like that. You see what I'm saying? They just slander and talk about anybody. But what if they're wrong? You see how, how dangerous it can be? What if they're wrong? That's all I'm going to say. He said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to sacrifice and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said surely the Lord's anointed is before him and the Lord said unto Samuel look not on his countenance okay and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said surely the Lord's anointed is before him that lets you know that the prophet himself, right? Wow. Let, let's keep reading. Just watch. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man sees. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on to the heart. Wow, that's interesting. You know, remember James says we got to be careful how we judge people by appearance. You know, keep it real. That goes for anything in life. That goes for, for example, um, y'all that have been emailing me to respond to my slanderers, right? Anybody could take a still shot. If, if I record you for two hours just talking and hand movements, at some point I can freeze the screen and make you look like you're some kind of Illuminati member. But remember, God sees the inside. As long as I know I am a child of God, as long as I know that I serve the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of the living God, it don't matter what people try to accuse or see on the outward appearance. As long as the Lord sees it. But the question is, do you? How do you judge others? Do you judge by appearance? If somebody's standing in front of a... Brick wall, do you call him a mason immediately? <laughs> you see how stupid it is? You got to look at the inside of that person. What is their fruit like? What do they talk about all the time? Did they talk about Jesus Christ all the time? Have they only talked about Jesus Christ for years? Mm -hmm. What do you think they're, who do you think they're from then? Do they come against Satan all the time? So you got to be careful how you judge people. It's very easy to do that. And trust, you'll find out soon. But look at this. They, he judged by appearance and assumed, oh, he got to be the anointed one. God said, nah, don't do that. The, look, the Lord, don't judge by appearance. The Lord look at the heart, you see. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither have the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord had not chosen these. Jesse got a lot of children. <laughs> Look what it says. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all your children? And he said, ah, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. This is amazing. See? Jesse didn't even want to present David. That's a lack of respect as a parent. So if any of y'all have not been appreciated by your parents or your other brothers and sisters was loved more than you, don't be discouraged. God is your number one father before your earthly father. Amen? And there's probably a reason for that. He has a calling in your life. But anyways, let me let me go on now. So I find it intriguing how he said, we shall not sit down till he come hither. You know, in the temple, there was no chair allowed. A high priest and those who worked in the temple were not allowed to sit down, right? What man of God was it? 
I want to say either let, let no, nah, maybe Derek Prince. It might have been David Wilkerson. Leonard Ravenhill, David Wilkerson, Derek Prince, G. Craig Lewis, and a few others. These are people that I've I've referred people to for years. I didn't say they're perfect, but these are men of God that do love the Lord. And if they happen to make a mistake, don't cut their head off and slaughter them. Because then God will come see you and see what your motive and your intentions are. But these are true men of God. Okay, I'm not signing off that they're perfect. But three of them are already with the Lord. G. Craig Lewis, thank God he's still alive. Right? But one of them had talked about this in one of their messages. And they talked about how... It must have been Derek Prince. I believe it was. The reason why they weren't allowed to sit down in the temple is because the work was never finished. Until Jesus Christ shed his blood, then the work was finished. That's why Jesus sat down at the right hand. You see, the job was done. How cool is that? I just wanted to throw that in there. I found that very awesome and intriguing. But look at this. Look at this. Come on. It says... And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. And with all of a beautiful countenance. And goodly to look to. And the Lord said arise anoint him. For this is he. Now ruddy if you look that up. Right. David was not tall. Okay. I'm about to grab that. You know I know y'all like oh no. He about to grab the guitar. Just mute it. Mute daddy mute the. Mute the channel. Mute the video, Bob. He about to play. God made your people so special. The rest he just gave some height. I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, he was a short brother. You know what I mean? I don't mean that, you know, David was down with the crew, if you know what I mean. But, check it out. He said, this is he. He was a beautiful countenance, goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him. And I believe that was more of a, like a spiritual blessing on him. You remember when uh, Stephen, the first martyr, recorded? He had the face of an angel when he was preaching and the presence of God was so strong on him. Now, I got a message about that. I can't get into that now on what that really was. But at that moment, there was beauty on him. You know what I'm saying? So check this out. Uh, the Bible says, um, actually, my wife had brought this up. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Right? So there's a beauty of holiness. You can get someone that is not the best looking, per se. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying. I mean, you can find someone like me. But holiness will make you look better than you actually look. There will be a glow on you, be a light on you. That God will just make you just even beautiful with His holiness. How cool is that? So, ladies, you know what I'm saying? You don't need that makeup, you feel me? You just get into the holiness of God and that'll be your makeup. That'll be your covering. So, check it out now. It says... Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. How amazing is that? The prophet's job is done. He took that horn, filled it with the oil, anointed David, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David. Remember, the spirit of the Lord came upon Saul. But because of his disobedience, because of his wickedness, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Okay? You got to catch that. As for y'all, oh, say the name of Jesus one time and you guaranteed heaven. You better watch out for them false teachers, y'all. There's too many teachers online. There's too many teachers online. Okay, you don't be surprised why God allows everything to happen the way it, is, it seems like it's happening because there's too many teachers online. You're better off. <laughs> I ain't going to get into it. But look at this now. Look at this. Wow. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Did that? 
but I got the NIV. I thought I got the King James. What's your Bible say? Sister, can you help a brother out? But brother, can we read this together? Because uh, that didn't sound right. Hold on a minute. And Saul's, hold on now. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now, of course, I'm, I'm, you know, joking around a little bit. Sometimes you need that to emphasize on something, right? People think they know God. And I think that's dangerous. You know, I think that's probably one of the number one reasons why Jesus' statement will be, get away from me. I never knew you. Because you notice the people that claim to know everything about God got the most foolish teachings and doctrines. But yet they think they know God. I could say something so radical and be like, man, may feces smear on your face like God said. And people that don't know the Lord, they don't study the scripture. There'll be a YouTube video they'll make about me. Just Could you imagine this guy Wally works? First off, I laid the name works on the altar mad months ago. Before no one started running their mouth about the name. So that name's gone. When people call me works, it's just because I don't feel like correcting a million people. It's not because it's evil. God just told me if I was willing to sacrifice that name. And if you've never seen laying the ghetto gospel on the altar, um, the spirit of sacrifice, is it? Something. I think that's the name of it. Watch those two messages. But just check it out, though. They'll go... Could you imagine works said that the Lord would smear crap on your face? But yet in the Bible, the Lord actually says that. He's so angry. Why is it that people think all anger is automatically unclean? That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. It is so bad in the last hour, especially in America. And shout out to the real saints of God in America. If it wasn't for y'all. This country would be way worse than it is right now. You are actually helping to preserve this country. Uh, at least hold it back. It's, it's inevitable, but you get my point. But shout out to the true saints that actually study the word and study God and spend time with the Lord. Because y'all are like, oh yeah, it does say that. I remember reading that. There's a lot of things that God has done that will make someone who's not really close to Christ kind of back away and be like, eh. Should I turn to a Buddhist instead? I mean, what's going on? Is this the real God? Yes, he's the real God of heaven and earth. He's just not some sweetheart like you think he is. He is love. He is awesome. But he's coming back with a sword. So what you define as some sweetie pie, you better get that out of your mind when it comes to the Lord God Almighty. So yes, God sent an evil spirit to Saul. Oh, he's dark. It must be some kind of dark Lord. No, this is God Almighty. The same God who died for you. The same God who is love. Let that sink in. Be careful what you say about the word, about the Lord, about what you think you know about God, and about his people, and about his servants. I'm warning you. Warning you, because just remember something. It's God who avenges his people. So check this out. So, Saul's, uh, hold on. And the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Okay? And it says, Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. <laughs> He's an honest servant. Can I get an amen? Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a what? Harp. Oh, this is so good. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shall be well. What? I use no CVS needed, no Walgreens prescription, no New Age garbage. The Lord will bring healing to this man by a man after God's heart that has a harp. Oh, that's so good. But hold on now. And Saul said unto his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, 
and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a calmly person, and the Lord was with him. Talk about a compliment. <laughs> Good night. Brother, you were short, but you had a lot of gifts, man. You know, David was a cool brother, man. I'm telling you. I'm excited to see him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Could you imagine? Could we talk for a moment? I know I said I wouldn't make this three hours, but you got to understand, I needed this dinner table message. You know what I'm saying? All the spiritual warfare going on and, you know what I'm saying, all the garbage. It's like good to just be able to sit down and have this meal with you and talk. Aren't you excited about the marriage supper of the Lamb? I'm talking to y'all that are actually following Christ. You love the Lord. You wash under the blood and you're carrying the cross. You're, you're a new creature. Imagine, we're going to see all of these people at this table. David. Esther. You know what I'm saying? Peter and James and Paul and Barnabas, Priscilla and Aquila and the list goes on. Not to mention... All the in-betweens that we don't know about. For the last 2,000 years. I mean, obviously before that there are some as well, right? But I'm talking about after Jesus Christ died and resurrected. This is amazing. Aren't you excited to meet David? I mean, let's keep it real. Um, this is... Whatever. I just wanted to have a little dinner talk with you. But look what it says. So... Totally just an honorable servant talking about David. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's rare to find people that will keep it real about somebody without feeling jealous or envious or got some kind of ulterior motives. What's wrong with just complimenting men and women of God that are truly gifted? First off, you don't know what they had to go through to get that gift. You don't know what they had to go through. You don't know what that sister had to go through to get the anointing of dreams and visions. She had to go through a lot of persecution when she first got saved. She had to sacrifice a lot. You don't, who are you to get jealous of her because of the gift God gave her? Who are you to get jealous of a man because he understands deep scriptures and mysteries? If you would repent and get in your prayer closet and be right with the Lord, who knows what God would give you? That's a dangerous, those two spirits right now are killing a lot of Christians on the inside. Jealousy and envy. And a lot of times when they come slandering and lying, you better believe it's jealousy and envy most times. Is it not? Is that not what the Bible said? The Pharisees out of envy, they did that to Jesus. Are we no greater than our master? Isn't he greater than us? If they hated him, if they were jealous of him, if he lives in you and me, won't they be jealous of you and me because of the anointing on us? That makes perfect logic to me. That's why you got to pray for him. Amen. But look what it says, though. And Saul said unto his servant, provide me now a man that can play. Wait, no, no, no. Verse 19. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David, thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey and laden it with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. Notice the bread and wine connection right there. That's amazing to me. That in of a truth, you can't deliver somebody without the bread and wine, without Jesus Christ, without his body and blood. You ain't delivering nobody. A lot of deliverance ministries. Can we talk about it? Let's just cut the mustard. We had the dinner table. A lot of deliverance ministries. They make a lot of mistakes they're not aware of. OK, and I'd love to talk about that on like another message. But one of them is. You can't be the deliverer. It's Jesus through you that cast out devils. A king. Wow. Ooh, you burping? Because I'm burping. A kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. That was the words of Jesus Christ. Okay. Think about this logically. Right. You need to bring the bread and the wine on your way to bring healing or deliverance to somebody. That means you got to have the body and the blood of Jesus on your side and in. Ah, oh, that's so good. Y'all enjoying this meal? Wait till you see how it brings it comes all together. You're going to be like, wow, you know what? I needed this. That Mark of the Beast video had me like woken up. So what better thing to do now that you're woken up and you know it's not a game. And you got to stay right, get right, and stay right, and be right, and stay in the Lord. He's the ark. You got to stay in him so when the door shuts, you don't get locked out. 
Remember, the five wise virgins went in and the door was what? Shut on the five fools. Anyways, I'm all, I'm, let's just get back to it. So David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before me for he hath found favor in my sight. Okay. I'm very tempted to talk about a completely different sermon, <laughs> but I'm a chill. I know I got to be obedient and stick to the script here. It says, and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played it with his hands. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. You imagine this. This is amazing. David gets sent with the bread and the wine. He got his heart. You know what I mean? Little, little animal. I don't know if that was for an offering. I'm not really sure. Maybe it was an honor thing to show honor to the king to bring a gift. I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe one of you scholars maybe know a little more than me about that. But this is amazing. Check this out. David gets with... Saul the king, could you imagine? See, David was not a hater. Can I get a name, man? David was not an insecure little boy who's got to slander and lie about other people because he's hurt inside. No, David loved King Saul. David, I mean, who was David compared to Saul in his eyes? In, in David's eyes? In David's eyes? Saul was amazing to him. You know what I mean? But he didn't know the details of Saul. You know what I'm saying? So... David was so joyful to be used by God for this man. But let's just break this down because the name of the, the, name of the message is what? The mystery of David's harp. On the line, human harps, right? So he starts playing this harp, right? This canor, this navel, nabel, or psaltery, a harp, right? And the anointing is so strong... The demon shakes off of Saul and leaves. And Saul is well and refreshed. How cool is that? But how many of y'all know, there's a lot of people in churches and they got great voices. They can play music. They can play guitar way better than me. But they don't have an anointing. That's why you have to realize it's the anointing with the music that will break the yoke. That's why I'm so grateful to have my wife Lioness. She loves the Lord. She loves to sing to the Lord. There's such an anointing with her beautiful voice. And you should see like she plays any type of instrument naturally. God teaches her. Of course, don't get me wrong. I still want to get her in classes. I want to get my boys in classes and I want to take classes. But it's that natural blessing that God gives to those who love to praise him. And that's definitely lioness because of the anointing we have other sisters other brothers in the ministry we have another sister Cynthia she plays the guitar she's never been taught she had to get into the presence of God and learn but there's anointing on my wife there's anointing on sister Cynthia there's anointing on other men and women of God because they love the Lord and they and they uh, you know I can't even get into that right now but this is why when David played the harp there was such an anointing that that unclean spirit had to leave. So there's a power here with music, with certain instruments, when it's with the anointing. Can you imagine that? And now you see why G. Craig Lewis was warning people for years that Satan also tries to use music to put an evil spirit onto somebody, right? If if holy music or harp and can make this can can cause the spirit of the Lord to move upon somebody. Could an evil music cause an unclean spirit to move on to somebody? And this is why a lot of times when we're doing deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the Living God, the only way you could do deliverance, we have people sing, and there's a reason for that. So let's let's bring it now. It's going to start going faster as far as finishing up this message, uh, but clearly. Okay, we got to wrap this up. This is such an amazing message. So all through the Bible, 
I mean, I'm not even going to do it. I'm not even going to do it. There's, there's too many for me to name off. What I'm going to do is kind of pick those that stand out. Amen. Because you can always do your own study. You should have a Strong's. You know what I mean? To look up um, where words are. It's very helpful. Don't just go to Google. It's better sometimes you just get a book. Get the Strong's or the one used. You know what I mean? And you can get them cheap, used. You know what I'm saying? And look up harp in the Bible and see what God will show you. But all through the word, there's talk about harps and uh, even in the book of Revelations. So what I want to talk about now is the power of the harp and how it symbolically represents something else. Okay, I want you to go with me to Psalms 144 and spoiler alert, there's a walk away about to come around the corner because I can just feel it. So if you want to do the walk away with me, sister, brother, let me back up my chair so I can. I want to walk into the guitar, you know what I mean? But go to Psalms 144. No, I did not. Just over right up to it. Did y'all just see this? There's no, there's no string. The string is not on the page. There's nothing in it. Nothing fell out. Look at this. Look at that. Can y'all see that? I hope you can. I hope you can. It opened right up to Psalms. Boys. Yeah. Scripture opened right up to Psalms 144. Wow. You got that on camera? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, see, how many y'all does that happen to? Name another book that happens to on a weekly basis. This book is alive, you guys. You brothers and sisters. Amen. So Psalms 144, we in the building now. In verse 1, it says, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Now, I definitely want you to read the entire chapter. Because there's a significance with the number 144. And the 144,000 witnesses. There's a nugget there. I shouldn't have said it, but I'm going to send you on a mission. But what I want to talk about is verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Now, for the longest time, I've, I never thought of it until I received the revelation, what, two days ago, I think it was? Yeah. I always thought like he meant, you know, with a sword and and of course he's talking about that. He's talking to the hands holding a sword and running through the Philistines or holding a sling to fight Goliath or whatever the case be. But did you ever consider what he meant by my fingers to fight? Is it okay if I hold my hands like this? Is this is this Illuminati? Let me know now, because I you know it's gets it's getting hard with all the slanderers. I Okay, let me just, okay, let's, let's continue the word. I can't even do nothing with my arms anymore. <laughs> you come on, brother and sister. You know it's funny. It's just so dumb. It's funny. Right? But what does he mean by my hands to war, right? War, but my fingers to fight? Like, what are you, Bruce Lee, someone in the neck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, guess what it is? Spiritual warfare. My fingers Come on Tell me that was not good right there Thank you Jesus Sorry son I'm going to take care of this guitar <laughs> Make sure I don't bust these strings You feel me He teaches my hands to war And my Fingers to fight David was actually all this time And I never knew this I'm almost 20 years in the Lord, and I never knew this, at least not consciously. Could you imagine that? He's talking spiritual warfare. You can fight with weapons of music. Oh, I'm done, y'all. Can we go? Can we wrap up this meal? Wait, though, there's more. So, teaches my hands to warm, my fingers to fight. So when he went to King Saul, he was at war. He wanted to fight on behalf of the king and God is so merciful and David is so special to the Lord. God was like, oh, David, you know, David, he grabbed that guitar, you know what I mean? It just started playing that harp, you know? Um, and at that moment, the anointing was so strong 
You know, I'm sure David sang a song. Who knows, right? I mean, clearly, if you don't know what Psalms is about by now, you got to be kidding me. David loved music. David was much more cooler than you think. Now, slanderers and Pharisees would have just called him a, a murdering adult. But he was more than that. That was a time in his life he made a mistake. And that was terrible. And trust me, he paid the price. But God loves David so much. He loved it. So David was a musician, prophet. He loved the Lord. Could you imagine what it was like to hang out with David while he sang a song? David was the type of king. Now, I know he ain't king yet from what we just read, but David was the type of brother. He'll wake up and be like, hey, the servant will come over. Yes, king. I need you to gather up all the musicians. I'm trying to dance in the presence of God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He knew a secret. He knew a secret. All right. So teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight. And this is a perfect message for y'all brothers and sisters, especially with everything that's happening. You've got to know how to do spiritual warfare. And this message right here is going to be so helpful for you. All glory to Jesus Christ. So he teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight, playing the harp, right? Well, there's another scripture, and shout out to my wife because she took it from me. I was talking about this sermon, and I'm giving it, and she was like, oh, I got something. I was like, yeah. She's like, you know when, when, when Paul and the soldiers were locked in prison? I was like, mm, you took that right from me. See, that's the beauty of being one flesh. You see what I'm saying? Husbands, celebrate when your wives get stronger in the Lord. And wives, celebrate when your husbands get stronger in the Lord. And look for the signs of hope. Look, even if it's just small things. Take that and be like, Amen. So, shout out to Lioness. So, Acts chapter 16, let's go there. Now, I I'm pretty sure you see where I'm going with this. Oh, wait, no. Before we go to Acts 16, it's time for the breakdown, Okay. One of y'all going to pause the video right here and be like, look, one eye symbolism. Check this out. In the word of the Lord, Jesus is referred to the greater, the greater Jonah, the greater Solomon. Yes or no? How many of y'all have ever seen the greater Moses message that uh, Christ gave me to give y'all? If you haven't seen listen, please take your time and go through the dinner messages. Please. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you on what dinner table messages to watch. I'm telling you, you need that nutritious, healthy word of the Lord to go in you to give you strength for what is coming. Do not waste your time on garbage right now. Okay, so check this out. So if he's the greater Moses, he's the greater Solomon, he's the greater Jonah. This means that those men were like foreshadows, right? Remember when Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Behold, a greater Jonah is here. Behold, a greater Solomon is here, the Bible says. Well, Jesus is the greater David. He's not David, but he's the greater David. Because there's so many parallels to the life of David to Jesus. David was a shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. Right? David was... Not really acknowledged the way he should, right? By his dad and by his brothers, Jesus wasn't acknowledged like he should have been by his family, right? David, check this out now, he killed an enemy no one else could or was willing to fight, and that was Goliath. Jesus killed an enemy none of us could and that was death hell and the grave and the devil face on it took back the keys of hell and death how awesome are these parallels but watch this it goes deeper David's best friend was Jonathan Jesus's number one favorite disciple was John I'm will you walk away for a brother because I ain't got time to be walking away too much check this out so I'm meditating on this, and I'm like, well, well, hold on, well, pause. If there's so many parallels between David's life and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the greater David, what about the harp? Can I get in there? I, would, you know, I really would love it if I had an actual harp right now, because I got the guitar. It's just not a harp, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's something interesting and unique. Don't get me wrong. If you're a guitar person, get it in. Amen. But there's something special about a harp. Amen.
But if I had a harp right now, I'd just start, you know, just worshiping the Lord with it, right? But could there be a significance in the spirit realm where David had a harp in his hand and he could play it to take evil spirits out of people? Could Jesus have a harp? Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Wow. Wow. Oh, this is so good. Okay, let's talk about it. First off, we got to start with Jesus. He's always, listen, what I love about dinner table messages is you'll notice a pattern in this ministry, all glory to God. The messages are designed and brought forth to point to who? Jesus Christ. You notice that? <laughs> so, it's just amazing to me. I, I don't want to get into it. I can't. Lord, I, I leave it alone. Lord, that'll be its own video. But these messages are meant to point you to Christ or show you Jesus somewhere hidden and reveal him and reveal Jesus to you. I mean, after all, shouldn't that be the most exciting thing is seeing Jesus? Is he not your best friend? So let's check it out. So could it be that Jesus is the harp of God? I said I wasn't going to do the walk away, but can we can we just walk away just real quick? Because I can't handle it. Can, one, two, three. All right, let's go. One, two, three. Jesus is the harp of God the Father? God plays Jesus in the spirit realm? Now, if this is the case, you'd be like, well, Jesus never be singing. So you're probably like, man, show me where Jesus be singing. Well, let's go to Matthew. Come on. Go to chapter... 26. Check it out now. There's other scriptures too, but we're just going to read one. Look at how beautiful this is. Go to verse 29 going down. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Now watch verse 30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Wow. And said Jesus unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Now pause. Verse 30 said they sang together. Jesus sang. Can you imagine what his voice is like? That's exciting. That's exciting to know that we're going to hear Jesus sing. You know what I mean? And, of course, we'll be able to sing to him and worship him to the glory of God the Father. But, so if Jesus is like the harp in God's hands, could it be possible that we are harps in the hands of Christ? Right? I mean, see the, 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 the parallel between David and Jesus, right? I mean, there's so many parallels that surely Jesus has a harp, right? So I'm meditating on this, and I'm like, wait, pause. We are human harps. I know you're getting excited. Go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Y'all ready? Let's go to verse... Let's go to 24 going down. Who having received such a charge... Thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Sometimes God will have you praise for someone else to hear. Oh, you better catch that. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Come on, man. Are you serious right now? At that moment, Paul and the soldiers with him, even though it was a bad situation, it wasn't a joyful time to a regular Christian. But those who study the scriptures and those who walk in the spirit knew that persecution always brings blessings. When they beat you. When they put you in a prison or a lion slander about you, it's time for you to praise and be a harp in the hands of Jesus Christ. Oh, this is so good. So they were human harps at this moment. You see how David played the harp 
That wasn't bad. I didn't do too bad right there. I can't get my hands off. That's beautiful, ain't it? I love the guitar and all. I want to really learn, y'all. Pray. Um, we're musical people in this house. Legit. Check this out. As Paul and the soldiers were singing in the prison, this is what it was sounding like to God the Father. They were singing, but they were actually spiritual harps. They were human harps. And just as that demon had to break off of Saul with David, the prisons had to let go of the, of the prisoners. It was so powerful. Do you know that sometimes God will have you praise to set other people free? Uh, this is a totally a walk away type message. If you got to pause and walk away, I don't blame you. All glory to Christ. But they were harps in the prison. Breaking that, that yoke through praise and worship. Isn't that amazing? I mean, Ephesians chapter 5, if we could just go there real quick. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. And this is verse uh, 17 going down. 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, beloved... Redeeming the times because the days are evil. Wherefore be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. That's his polite way of saying, don't be stupid, don't be dumb. Right? Check this out. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to yourself in what? Psalms. And hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? See, you are a human harp, sister, brother. You are a human harp in the hands of Jesus Christ. So don't think singing or praising and dancing is not for you because you might not have the best voice. I don't got the best voice, but I know my, my voice is anointed because I love the Lord and he's in me and he's anointed me. So I love to sing to Jesus. Sometimes when you're alone, it's, I'm telling you, it's amazing. That's why you should have a prayer closet. Maybe you don't have a closet. Maybe you in a one bedroom somewhere with other people. Make your car your prayer closet. Make somewhere where you can sing to the Lord without being conscious of other people and worry what they think of you. Stop worrying about what people think of you. Right? But be a harp in the hands of Christ. You never know the Saul that God is going to send you. Oh, that's good. That's good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You never know the Saul God will send you to. Maybe God will wake you up at 2 in the morning. And tell you to start praising. He said, hey, you my harp. Start playing. Start praising. You didn't know it, but the neighbor that lives above you was getting ready to kill herself. But God had you become a harp to get the devil out of her. You didn't even know it. Just as Saul and them, just as Paul and them was praising in the jail. And they were the human harp. To, uh, eventually, even the, the, the leader or the one in charge of the prison ended up giving his life to Christ. Maybe God will send you to be a harp for some Saul on the job. Instead of looking at them as, oh, they're just wicked, they're your enemy. Try to praise God on their behalf. Oh, that's so good. Wow. And you know what confirms it is technically, scripturally wise, we in the hands of the Lord. Oh, this is so good. Go to John chapter 10. I told you it's a good meal, ain't it? He, the Lord never fails. He is an amazing chef. Amen. He just knows how to cook for real. Ain't hard to serve, you know. I'm just a server. <laughs> I used to say back in the day, don't forget to leave the waiter a tip. You know what I mean? But you know Pharisees. Now there he goes, begging for money. Check this out. John. This is John chapter 10. Uh, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You see that? 
Now, it doesn't say you can't walk away from his hand. It said no man can pluck you out of his hand. But what are we doing in the hands of could one of the reasons were in the hands of the Lord? I mean, how could the Lord play you, you or me as a human harp without being in his hands? So the reason the devil tried to get you out of the hands of the Lord, sister, brother, because remember, it says no man. But Jesus said that one little lamb left the 99 and wandered off into the woods. That, that flock of sheep are people that have given their life to Christ. Worldly people don't walk with Jesus, okay? So once saved, always saved. You might as well just not make a comment. But that one that walked away from Jesus, he loves so much, he'll leave the 99 that are obedient and go get the one. But technically, they walked out of his hands, whether the devil lured them into uh, fornication or drugs or some kind of sin that made them walk out of the hands of Christ. He got to get him back and say, come back in my hands, child. I love you. And you're a beautiful harp and I want to use you and I want to play you on the earth to bring forth my gospel. How cool is that? I know I'm a one noted brother, ain't I? Every song going to be the same. Keep it real. If I make an album with this guitar right now, but like track number one. In the name of the Lord. In the name. Track number two. The Lord is my strength and I love him. Track number three, watch out for the enemy. So clearly, a brother need to train up and learn this guitar. But I would want to learn the harp. I'm going to just keep it real. But my point is, is that the Lord wants to keep you in his hands so you can remain an instrument for him to play. Isn't that amazing? So let's kind of bring all this together. I got some really cool nuggets I want to tell y'all about. Write these down. We're not going to read them all to save time, but... I want you to write Isaiah 24, verse 8, and I want you to write harp of joy. Isn't that cool? Harp of joy. I want you to write down Isaiah 30, 32. Write that down. And then I want you to write next to it the harp of battle. Write that down. In 1 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 3, I want you to write the harp of prophecy. That's, that's amazing. And then Isaiah 23 verse 16. I want you to write the harp of remembrance. Now that's four. Alright we're going to leave it at that. But if you and I are harps in the name of Jesus Christ. That means while you're praising and being a human harp. And you're worshiping God in the prayer closet. Closet or on the job or on the highway in traffic, whatever. You know what I mean? Don't let time be wasted. Take that time and say, you know what? Now was a good time for Jesus to play my strings. I'm going to sing to him. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to exalt him. I need to be a harp of joy in the midst of people going through depression. Oh, come on. I need to be a harp of battle when the fallen angels and principalities are waging war in my area, in my city, in my country, anywhere I go. I got to be the harp of battle. I got to be the harp of prophecy when the spirit of the Lord comes upon me and I got to speak life into somebody. And I got to be the harp of remembrance. Now, I find it amazing because in Nehemiah, right, just there's so many. I'm not doing it. Okay, again, you can study on your own time and it'd be good for you to study on your own time because you never know what you'll find. You feel me? But in Nehemiah 12, verse 27, and at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgiving and with singing and the cymbals and psalteries and with the harps. So you notice when it, whether it was with the Ark of the Covenant or just presenting themselves before the Lord, they sang to the Lord, they worshipped Him, they danced, they played harps. And also instruments that blew air. That represents the Holy Spirit running through you as the instrument. We got a soldier in the ministry who plays the, um, was that the trombone or something like that? I don't even know the name of it. But um, yeah, he, uh, we haven't heard him yet, but we're excited to hear him. The, um, trumpet, the trombone, I think is the name of it. But my point is, is that's an air instrument, right? That represents the Holy Spirit got to run through you and out of you as an instrument. 
Come on, that's good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But here's where I want to go with this. Now that you realize the mystery, that you are a harp in the hands of the Lord, I also want to warn you that the devil has harps too. If you read Daniel chapter 3, they played the harps as one of the instruments when they bowed down to the image, which actually is a foreshadow of the Antichrist and the image that speaks. Did you know that? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego represent the faithful few that will not bow and take the mark of the beast and all of it together to be thrown into the furnace, heated up seven times. That represents seven years of tribulation. That's a whole nother message, y'all. But my point is, is harps were used to worship the enemy. So the devil sees you as a harp and he wants to try to use you to use to use you to bring worship to him and his kingdom, you see? So you better be on point. You better know you are a harp for the Lord, no one else. However, I got to tell you this nugget, and I know for a fact it deserves a walk away. It is so fascinating. Did you know that Josephus, when he was describing the ancient Kinoa, the psaltery, the harp, right? When he was describing the harp, in the Hebrew tradition now, in the ancient days of the Hebrews, the Israelites, he said it's ten strings, okay? I don't want to get into the deep, maybe I'll put a picture on the screen if I get around to it, but it's ten strings, and guess what the strings on the harp back in the days of like David, guess what the strings were made out of, I kid you not. I'm about to do the walk away. I'm about to do the walk away. He's just so powerful. Oh, come on. I'm about to do the walk away. I'm about to do the walk away. You know what I'm saying? I can't help it, y'all. I'm about to do the walk away. Are you ready for this? Let me show you Jesus now. Didn't I tell you it's all about Jesus Christ? Didn't I tell you? <laughs> I'm just going to come out and just say it. Did you know that the ten strings were made from the small intestines of sheep? I'm, I'm done. I'm done, y'all. I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta go, y'all. I gotta go. I, I gotta go. Are you serious right now? Are you serious? Are you telling me that the strings that make the beautiful noise were made with the small intestines of sheep of a lamb? Some of y'all like, ew, hey, that's how they got it in back in the day. You can come in, come on in. That's how they got it in back in the day. But look how you see Jesus. Without him, you can look at David had to bring the, the bread and the wine, remember? And now you know when he had that harp, it had the strings made by the small intestines of a lamb. Jesus was all through there. You just didn't know it. So it lets you know you can't get a demon out of somebody without Jesus Christ. Without the bread and the wine and without the intestines of Jesus Christ representing his body that was broken for us. So much mystery about the Son of God that we are just now tapping into 2,000 years later. How awesome is that? Now, some of y'all like, man of God, you better have at least one scripture to back that up because you finna to tell me that the small intestines of the Son of God has been made into strings to be played. See, chill out. I told you. There's some people, their minds are so dirty. Everything is evil to them. Everything's Illuminati to them. And they'll actually spit in the face of a servant of God because of what they think they see. You better have a clean mind, saints. Listen to me carefully. This is spiritual. Jesus Christ is not an actual lamb with fur. He's not an animal. But he's the lamb of God. You see? He died for us. He was offered up for us. There you got the strings on the harp made by the small intestines of the lamb. And I'm wondering if they would stretch it, let it dry. I don't know the process. But I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 16. Isaiah went. 
Isaiah went all out when it comes to harps, if you really study it. But we're going to wrap up with this, then we're going to pray. Isaiah chapter 16. Check it out. Come on. Let's get it. Isaiah 16. Look at what it says now. For y'all that were wondering, man of God, I need at least one scripture. I'm unsubscribing. I ain't no longer a partner because you bugging now. You talk about strings made out of lamb guts. Okay, all right. I see how it is. I thought we was cool. Check it out. Chapter 16. Chapter 16, verse 11. Wherefore my bowels shall sound like a harp. Oh, hold on, hold on. What are bowels? What are bowels? Can one of y'all help a brother out? What about? Last time I checked, it's around this area, okay? Now, just like a whole lot of y'all, I'm sure as you get older, it's harder to lose weight. So don't be, you know what I mean? I'm trying, okay? But what about? It got to do with the belly. Can I get an amen? So why would bowels be mentioned in reference to a harp? Now, oh wow, I'm catching a revelation. Wow, Lord. All glory to Christ. Now you see why Judas, it says his guts came out. He was unworthy to be a ho- Nah, 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 come on, y'all. Why y'all doing this to me? I gotta go, man. Come on. He was unworthy to be a harp. God said, nah, you gotta go. This is why we're a living sacrifice. We got to be the harp. We got to, that's why the Bible, Paul said, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame. That's why you got to be selfless. You got to be willing to fast. You got to be willing to sacrifice. So your belly could be dedicated to make a harp out of the strings. You turn your belly spiritually into the strings spiritually to make you the harp in the hands of Jesus Christ. I'm done. This is amazing. What an awesome message to put in between all the stuff going on, ain't it? Because now, sister, brother, be the harp in the midst of tribulation. Be the harp. Now, obviously, we got to go to the book of Revelation because, you know what I mean? Come on, this is the book of Revelation. So go to chapter 5. We're going to go to Revelation chapter uh, 5 first, and then we're going to move forward. Okay, check it out. We're going to pray right after this. Revelation chapter 5, we're going to be quick with it. Verse 8, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them a what? Harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. There's something special about the harp, y'all. How come no one is preached on this stuff? This is amazing. See? Ain't nobody... Listen, liars can say whatever they want. All you got to do is go through our, our videos. Don't just go based off the title because you can be deceived by someone telling you, oh, look at He said, he said, raising the knife. What, what kind of evil message is that? Well, if a person with the spirit of dumb would actually watch it, probably wouldn't get convicted if they cold hearted. But it's a message about sacrifice, right? So look at how amazing this is. Message on harps is Didn't even know Jesus it was the harp in the hands of the Father And we are the harp in the hands of Christ And we got to be played To help other people get a demon out of them like Saul How awesome is that So here we got the harps again I want you to go now to chapter 14 with me Check this out now In Jesus name Look at what it says now and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Sion, and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written on their foreheads. Wow. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. What? Oh, man. Are y'all ready to pray? I'm ready to pray. Go to chapter 15. Go to chapter 15 real quick. We're going to go to verse 2. It says in Jesus' name, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and then that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name. Stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. Do you not see how prophetic this message is right now? What would be the odds that God would tell me to put out a message? That I'm getting persecuted right now for. You think it's coincidence, y'all? 
is you're blessed when you're persecuted because you're doing something right. Remember that. But you've got to realize what would be the odds that after coming out, God giving a warning and a message about the mark of the beast, he would command me to come out with a message about the harps of the Lord. And let's read it again. Look how prophetic this is. You should be jumping out of your chair right now just because of the victory that God has in your life. Look what it says. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast. And over his image. And over his mark. And over his the number of his name. Stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. This is the victory that God is telling us. That we are going to overcome the mark of the beast. If we're faithful to him. If we love him. If we're dying daily. And this, this message, sister, brother. Wow, how awesome is this? This message is confirmation. Think about it. In the same verse mentions the mark of the beast and harps. And God has me preach a message on the mark of the beast and then follow right after with a harp message. One more. We got to go, y'all. One more. Chapter 18, verse 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more. At all in thee. And no craftsman or whatsoever craft he be shall be found no more at all in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, but by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. This is God saying, remember what the Bible say, he that now let us will let, God is going to remove himself. And everyone taking the mark of the beast, we ain't going to be harping anymore. Wow. For y'all that think it's a game. God forbid for those who take the mark of the beast, they're not going to hear the voice of the harpers. They're not going to see the light. It's going to be removed. You see how this is. Wow. 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 It's time to pray, y'all. It's time to pray, saints. Will you pray with me? Will you humble yourself? Come on. Let's get down. Let's pray. Let's wrap this up with a prayer. We're going to recap and we we wrapping things up. Let's pray, y'all. I am so excited. Say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God. Lord, this message has filled me with joy. And now I know as you are a harp in the hands of your father, I am a harp in your hands, Lord. I am a human harp. Now I know what David meant when he said you teach his hands to war and his fingers to fight. Not every weapon has to be sword. Some weapons are spiritual for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Lord Jesus Christ, make me a harp of joy when you need me to be that. Make me a harp of battle when you need me to be that. Make me a harp of prophecy when you need me to be that. Make me a harp of remembrance when you need me to be that. As they played the harp when they would travel with the ark, I want to be a harp traveling with the Holy Ghost. Wow. As Paul was locked up with his soldiers and they were harps that activated and broke the cells around them. Lord, use me to be a harp to break the prison cells of other people that are bound by the powers of darkness. Wow. Lord, as you sent David... But he didn't go without the bread and the wine. Lord, may I never go without you, Lord. The bread and the wine and the lamb's small intestines as the string. Your body is the only way I can play the songs and play the, play the melodies from you, the great harp. Lord, send me to a Saul, wherever he or she is. Maybe a Saul is my neighbor. Maybe a Saul is my spouse or children. Maybe a Saul is my mother-in-law. Maybe a Saul is my boss at work. Wherever the Saul is, Lord, send me to that Saul that I may be a harp to cast a demon out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I love you so much and I'm just so grateful. I want to obey Ephesians 5 that I will make melody in my heart. I will sing to you, Lord. 
I will praise you. I will give you the glory. I will lift you up in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for this revelation. Thank you. So I'm so encouraged, Lord. I'm so encouraged, Lord. You showed us right now in Revelations that not only will you give us the strength through you to overcome the mark of the beast, but we will stand with hearts as victory. Lord, I receive this message as your confirmation that as John 10 promises, we will remain in your hands as long as, God forbid, we don't walk away. We love you, Lord. Keep us in holiness. Keep us in righteousness. Keep us in the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I dedicate myself right now to be an instrument of praise for Jesus Christ. To be in his hands as a spiritual harp, a human harp. In the hands of the Messiah, Son of God. Lord, use me as a weapon against my enemies. To cast down powers of darkness and break spells and curses and smash witchcraft and fear and doubt. Lord, use me as a harp to cry in the streets, to warn people. May they see your glory upon me and know you are with me. Keep me humble. Keep me clean and pure that I'm not a Saul who gets anointed and your heart brings your spirit on me. And because of wickedness and rebellion, you withdraw your presence from me. Lord, keep me from that. Keep me righteous, honoring your presence by my actions and my lifestyle. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare that I now know and believe I am an instrument of praise and I am a harp in the hands of Jesus Christ. Lord, use me. I give you the praise right now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Wow. <laughs> All right, check this out. I want y'all to see this in the spirit. Remember, the word of God says, God reveals the things hidden in the darkness to his servants. Okay. Do you want to know why the children of the devil. The Illuminati. Have the harp weather modification weapon system. Why did they name it harp? Because Satan knows this mystery. That he don't want you to know. That Jesus is the great harp. In the hands of God the Father. And we are the harps of Jesus Christ. The human harps. Right? Check this out. Think of what we do. And think of what their weapon system does. Their harp weapon system is designed with technology to change atmosphere and weather. You see? To change things. Well, we as harps in the hands of Christ, we change neighborhoods. We change atmospheres. Somebody oppressed with demons, we can step in with the power of Christ and as a harp be played like David. Remember, when David played the harp... He changed the atmosphere and changed Saul's circumstance and the demon left him. The same way we can go into a neighborhood, enter into somebody's life and as a heart play and change the atmosphere and set the captives free. This is why the devil named that weapon system harp. Once again, in the name of Jesus Christ, we expose the enemy's plans and this is why he sends his punked out soldiers to try to slander us. Wow. Are y'all full? We'll be back. We got to get the other uh, video, Lord willing, done. More information on the mark of the beast. Okay, we got other dinner table messages. All right, for y'all to keep hounding me to respond to these slanderers, you got to you gotta chill. You gotta, I got to wait on the Lord. The Lord fights my battles. And always remember something, saints of God. As long as you know the Lord is with you and that the Lord knows... That you are his child and that you truly serve him. Don't let the children of the devil discourage you with slander, false accusations, hatred, or whatever the case be. Hide yourself in the presence of the Lord and wait on him. No different than a child at the playground, at the park. Let's say a seven-year-old, five-year-old child gets picked on. By, a, by an 18 year old male. That child is going to call for his or her father. And say daddy he took my bike from me. Daddy he took my ice cream from me. Daddy he pushed me onto the ground. 
because that five-year-old has the understanding that this is an enemy that they need their father to fight on their behalf. Go to your prayer closet when the wicked rise up against you. Never run ahead without going to the father. I promise you, I promise you, if you do that and you're standing in righteousness and the accusations brought against you are false, he will fight for you. And he will have his reward to those that lie in slander. So in Jesus' name, you are a, a amazing harp. As my wife said, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, remain clean. And know that harps, they need to be cleaned and kept good. They, you know, just like a guitar, you got to twist these and make sure the strings are right. You got to pray and fast and read and show yourself approved. That way you remain a, a nice harp. That you don't get worn out over time. You got to keep yourself, you know, replenished in the Lord. Regenerated in the Lord. Saints, get ready. The mark of the beast is coming. But don't lose your joy. That's why the Lord told me to give you this message. And revelation blew me away. What would be the odds that it talks about the mark of the beast that we overcome. And then it mentions harps. We would give you a message about the mark of the beast. And God would tell you to tell me to give you a message about harps. That's his confirmation that if you love him, if you seek him, if you deny yourself and follow after him, you will overcome the beast and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen, harp. Amen. Come over here, harp. Hold on. Let me. Eh, let me. Let me. Let me hit them strings real quick. Just, eh, get your praise on, sister. Get your praise on, brother. You are the harp of the Lord. We love y'all. Appreciate all our partners. Thank you for being in the fight with us. Your prayers and support. We love you so much. We don't beg y'all to pray and help us. That's a natural thing y'all willfully do. We love you so much. We'll see you again. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I will not fear the dark. I will stand and fight. Because my God is light. I'm a man of war. Look into my I'm gifted with sight It don't matter who the devil tries to bring in the night Like King David Blessed be the God who taught my hands to war And bless my fingers to fight And we don't fight against flesh and blood But principalities and powers in the rulers Cars for craters Stand up and rise and fight for the Lord And the power of the cross will save ya it don't matter how many Nephilim are roaming the land Brother better know you a man And have no fear Like Samson fighting a hundred Philistines With the jawbone in his hand Satan worried things ain't going according to plan We about to bring a storm in the land And I ain't cowering down I'd rather rise for the Lord and die in battle with a sword in my hand I will not fear the dark I will stand and fight because my God is light.